What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can request permissions in your app and more specifically how you can do so in a nicer way than a traditional uh, pop-up that you're pretty used to I'm sure after using an iOS device. So we're going to be building what you see here. We can nicely present the permissions we want in this list. We can of course hit this button to request it. Once we allow the permission, this changes to allowed. We can do this for a number of location, um, rather a number of permissions, including different types of location permissions. Uh, here, of course, we only have uh, these three permissions, but you can do this for anything. Uh, and as you saw there, once we have allowed all the permissions, this will auto dismiss. And this, uh, this UI is, of course, dark mode compliant. It's also available for iPad. And yeah, we're going to be building this. So that said, make sure you absolutely destroy that like button down below. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're new. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's talk about some permissions. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so let's get started by creating a new project. And we're going to stick with a single view application and let's call this my permissions, save it to our desktop and jump right into it. So we're going to be leveraging a framework called SP permissions to basically get the user interface and all the management uh, stuff that it provides into our app. So we're going to bring it in via CocoaPods. So let's get started by opening up terminal. CDing into our project, doing a pod in it. And if you're not familiar with Cocoa Pods, I've got an earlier video on them, so do take a look. Do an open pod file. And what we actually need to do, and what I recommend you do, is instead of bringing in the entirety of the framework, what we should do is bring in the subset of the framework that you need for given permissions. So what the heck does that mean? So if we type in SP permissions, let's say our app only needs the camera, location, and microphone permission. We should only do camera, location, and microphone. And the reason we want to do this is because your app will actually crash if we bring in everything and we don't include uh, the privacy string in our plist file. So if you're familiar with uh, how permissions already work, you need to include a uh, privacy string in your info.plist file in your project. And this file basically, uh, or this privacy setting shows the user a string. Uh, whenever you see in an app that so-and-so app wants permission, uh, it is a, basically a usage description. And Apple is super nitpicky about uh, only including permissions that your app truly uses. So this is a reason we're not bringing in the entirety of the framework and only these subset ones we need for camera, location, and microphone uh, for the purposes of this video, of course. So save this, close text edit, go back to terminal, do a pod install. And once this is done, you'll see some green installation messages like so. But once this is done, we can actually close this XC uh, or Xcode project, and we want to open up the project name that XC workspace. So of course the workspace includes all of uh, the pods and frameworks we just brought in. So let me expand this Xcode window and go to the view controller, select a simulator up here, and let's just make sure that this compiles by doing a command B and it should be compiling. Let's not run it yet. Um, now the next thing we want to do, like I just briefly mentioned, is go to our plist and add those permissions. 
So we're going to click on this last uh, row, hit enter, and we want privacy, location, uh, always and when in use. Let's put in a description. Please allow because I said so. Please don't actually use this in your application. It will get rejected super fast. Uh, the next one is privacy. What else did we say? Camera. So let's bring in the camera usage. Please allow access so I can see you. And then we also want the microphone. Um, so you can imagine what I was saying earlier. If we include the entire framework and we have to put every single privacy description here, uh, it'll get out of hand very fast. Um, let's see. Please allow access so I can record you. That's not creepy at all. So now that we have these three here, uh, let's go ahead and just hit Command R to build and run. It'll install our empty application here. Uh, and hopefully nothing should be crashing. Awesome. So it just opens up our empty app. So this framework um, provides a variety of ways for you to present user interface uh, for permission access requests. So you can customize the heck out of everything, but I'm going to be demonstrating the most common one, which is the list you saw at the beginning of this video. So let's get started by first adding a button and, an, and a respective action that gets called in this view controller um, when we tap the button to show that list. Now in your actual application, you probably want to not use a button. You probably want to uh, automatically check what permissions are enabled and show the controller based on that. Um, but we're going to be leveraging the framework, so let's just start by importing it to begin with. And let's also create an outlet in here. Um, it'll be a button of type UI button with an exclamation mark to force unwrap. Let's go to the force, uh, sorry, let's go to the main.storyboard. Um, and let's bring in a button. Throw it on our view controller. Right click this, drag from our button outlet to our button. And let me also give this a dark colored background. Uh, so let's select the controller, come here to background. Let's just go with this. And let's also set some constraints to this button. Uh, so let's say 100 from the top, 20, 20. And we'll also give this a height of 52. And let's click into this button and let's say um, show permissions. And most importantly, don't forget to connect your action. So let's click on this and drag from the IB action to the button. And in the event, we want to select touch up inside, which is a standard touch. So now let's uh, hit Command R or hit that play button up there to build and run your app. And you'll see your button pop up here. Of course, it's not doing anything yet. So let's go back to the view controller and let's actually see how to bring up our SP permission list. So like I said, we'll use a list uh, method to present the UI, which is pretty easy. So we're going to say let controller SP permission and we want a list. And this takes an array of t the permission types we want to request. So you can see there's a bunch in here. So we want camera, uh, location. Uh, let's see, there's a couple location ones in here, it looks like. We want this one because this is the one that matches the one we put in our info P list. And lastly, uh, we want, uh, what did I say? Camera, location, and microphone. So now that we have these in here, we can set some uh, text on this controller. So we're going to say title, I believe it's title text. Yep, there it is. Um, permissions. You can also say controller.header text. Please allow to get started. And there's also a footer text. Um, these are required. 
And before we talk about the delegate and data source, let's simply present the controller. And instead of doing a standard present with an animated, for this controller, what you want to do is you want to do controller uh, dot present uh, on UI view controller, and that'll be self. So that should be the minimum requirements to get this uh, showing up. So let's hit command R. Let's hit this, and you can see we've got this awesome looking user interface now. Uh, we have icons, and these icons are pre-built into the framework. We've got the title of the permission, uh, and then we also have uh, the button here, so we can select it. And you can see that we get some console logs printed down here. Um, we should get a pop-up for the permission, and once we allow, it, uh, it should update the button. Looks like for location always, it's not actually presenting. And let's see, the reason it's not presenting is, looks like the location string is missing from the plist. So maybe we actually did the other location, uh, which is location when in use. Also, let's hit Command R one more time. Hit this hit this and it's still not showing up so let's go back to the p list and let's see what we messed up so we have location when uh, always and when and i think we need another location so there's location always here we need location usage description uh, so we're gonna say please allow location so our app can stalk you so that sounds like a pretty uh, pretty nice user-facing description. So let's hit this again. Hit this. And it's still yelling at us. And the reason is because we changed this to be the other location. And we want it to be always and when in use. So you can see down here that it actually tells you what thing is missing from the plist. So it becomes easier to debug. Uh, even though I don't read it half the time. And we still aren't seeing location. So how about I read the error? So let's see, no factory registered, that's irrelevant. Uh, private Privacy sensitive, we need NS uh, location always and when in usage, uh, when in use description. Uh, and we also need NS, okay, this is what we're missing. So we also need to supply the other location privacy string. So I like to leave these uh-oh moments in the videos when I screw things up myself because I think this is the best way to learn, to be completely honest. So we also want location when in use. I'm going to be lazy and copy and paste the string. So there are three location things you need, I guess, in here. The first one is uh, always and when in use, when in use, and just usage. So let's try that for the third time. Third time's a charm, let's hit this, location, and there we go, there's our pop-up. Uh, and once we allow always, you see that all three of the permissions were allowed, so it went away. And if we hit it, we can get this back, and you'll see if we click on any of these uh, permission buttons, it'll just dismiss because everything is already uh, allowed and good to go. So, that being said, that's how you actually show the controller. Uh, and you can see it's actually a pretty nice user interface. It's got our icons, images, the buttons that automatically update, and all of it is done for you. Um, now, what if you wanted to customize the icons and all that jazz and uh, use like a function, a delegate function, to figure out what permission was denied so your app can handle? What you can do is you can actually set the delegate, which is a SP permissions delegate, Whoops, say so delegate is self, and we can have this controller conform to SP permissions delegate. And if we click into this, um, you will see that there are a number of functions in here. Uh, and by that, I mean these four. So there are this did allow function, did deny, uh, did hide, and deny data. So you can implement these functions to basically figure out uh, what was allowed, what was denied, what was hidden, and uh, this denied data basically gives you any uh, optional data that the system tells you about 
why it was denied or um, things around things around that. So that's what the delegate is for. Now there's also a controller dot data source and we can assign that to self and you can ignore the error here because we haven't conformed yet. And that's the SP permissions data source. This error will go away. Uh, but now it'll yell at us because this data source has some minimum required um, functions. So if we hit fix, we can see the minimum requirement is this function here, which is configure cell for permission. And what this data source lets you do, if we click into it, you'll see that's actually the only function. Um, it'll let you customize the cell that is shown for each of the permissions. So if you don't want to use this uh, UI provided by the framework, you're more than welcome to customize every aspect of it, including the icon, label, you can get rid of all of them, the button, uh, anything basically you could think of. Um, for most people, this UI is sufficient. It's a dark mode compliant. It works on iPad. It looks pretty nice. It's pretty simple. So yeah, that's how you would request permissions in bulk. Um, I would also mention that this type of presentation is generally good if you have uh, two or more permissions you're looking for. If you only have one permission, uh, in theory, you could use a screen, but it, it's a little bit of an overkill implementation for one permission. Uh, so yeah, that's it. If you haven't smashed that like button down below, make sure to do so. Let's absolutely destroy the like button. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Helps me make more videos for you all. Subscribe if you're new. If you have any issues, please do leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you guys. I try to reply to every single comment uh, within a couple days uh, at the latest. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.